So it's been over a year since mm. one of our first videos was a 7200. During that time, we've had a lot more real life use with it. Yeah. And it's featured in a lot of our comparison videos. So how, what's your first thoughts about it? I absolutely love it. It's definitely my favorite lens because it's so versatile with that range. Mm. F2.8, it's sharp throughout the range, right from F2.8 right, right the way through. So, so. Yeah, let's go into this. So one of the first things we used it for was actually music. Yeah. Now for small venues, it's I probably wouldn't recommend it. I have done it in small You have done it in small venues, but I prefer the primes and the short lenses. But we're in a, 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 a medium size yeah, event. Yeah, it was a good size venue. And it was perfect. Yeah. Yeah, 70 covered the whole stage and the crowd, and 200 yeah. perfectly isolated them. It yeah. was good enough light. And it was perfect, it stole the show. I mean, I was on like a balcony area, wasn't I? Yeah. So then I could go right down to one side of the stage close by. Yeah. Then you're shooting down, but then you can get real close up yeah. to some of the instruments or the musicians. Because uh, I was using an 85 in comparison. Yeah. And I couldn't get close enough because there was no uh, photographer's pit. No, no there wasn't. No, no. Pit. no. So I was struggling to get close enough. And I was using my 50. They were, they were good, but that just stole the show. Yeah. So. For that kind of medium-sized events, if you're doing theatre or any kind of stage, mm. I would say that is a perfect lens. So then we went to the zoo, but again, that lens was perfect. Because again, it's that medium length, I yeah. would say. And so you don't, you're not too close, you're not too far exactly. away. Exactly, coming f2.8, getting on for 200 mil, mm. really shallow depth of field. So even if you're shooting through you know, the bars of a cage or something, mm. you're gonna blur those well out so they disappear virtually. Well, um, well that's, well, that's one of the things that surprises me still about the lens is how far you can crop in with it. Mm. I don't think any of the lens I've tried, I love cropping, as you know. Croppy I, Russell. So I don't think I've ever come across a lens where you can crop in so far and get a, still a sharp image yeah. at 2.8. At 2.8. I think that's actually remarkable. I think that's, it, I think it is Nikon's best lens for that one of that, well, that reasons yeah. there. Now I'm going to compare the same 70 to 200, but at 2.8 compared to 6.3, just to show that there isn't much difference in sharpness when you shoot at different apertures for this. So obviously, we're shooting 2.8 to 6.3. The difference isn't that great, I don't think, which shows how great shooting at 2.8 is. Obviously you want it for the shallow depth of field, but you can comfortably shoot at 2.8 to let the light in, and it's still really sharp. And then we move on to portrait. Now that's an interesting one. Hmm. It's, I think we probably disagree on this, is that I wouldn't use it for portrait. Because? The working distance from the subject. Okay. To get, so we did a comparison with my 105, 1.4, hmm. and the 85. The 200, you can see on it, well, I think we did a walking thing, didn't we, where it shows the distance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But 200, to get the best bokeh, to compare with the 85 and the 105, you had to be quite far away. Mm. Especially for full length shots, you'd have to be quite really far away. Yeah. And for me, that's not a workable thing okay. with a portrait, because I like to have a rapport with them to direct them, especially when I'm working with people who aren't models. Yeah. They need a bit of directing and they need relaxing. And if I'm quite far away, that's not going to happen. <laughs> I've got, I don't know if you can see this from there, but I've got like 85 on there and a 105. Yeah, but that's a 2.8. Yeah, I know. So <laughs> that leads into, you could have a whole video discussion chat about the priorities when taking a portrait. But is it all about the bouquet then? Is it? Or yeah, for me, it's about the look. Sharpness, yeah. it's good if you've now, got it. The look. Yeah. Is that different to bokeh? Because bokeh, you're talking about a beautiful background or whatever. Mm. But this definitely has, I think this lens just has a look to it. As you can see, they actually are more similar because of the 200 millimeter. It brings the background even closer to me but because it's at 2.8, it has a different look and a slightly different angle again. But as you can see the bench, it's next to me there. It's a good look though. But the problem is you have to shoot so far away for a full length shot. Again, the 70-200 is doing a really good job here. It looks very similar to the 85, actually. But again, the compression is quite a lot different. Yeah. You know, okay. I was um, I went on holiday a few months ago, and I just had the 24 to 200, and I took some photos. At probably getting on for 200 mil with it. For me, that photo just didn't have the look. You know, I thought, oh, I wish I'd got my 70 to 200 because, regardless of 
you know, it could have been an F8, so we're not talking about shallow depth of field or bokeh or anything like that. I just think it would have just had a, a much nicer look to it, and it's really hard to define what that is. You're talking about some kind of image rendition that yeah. it's not sharpness, it's not depth of field, it's somewhere the combination of everything yeah. about the lens. Yeah coming together and I agree with you actually because it's hard to define but it's it is hard just, to define it's there you know because like the 24 to 200 is a, is a really good travel lens it is, yeah. it's light it's portable it's got a great zoom on it it's sharp but it does lack something that the expensive glass doesn't have mm. and like the 50 to 250 we did a video on that it's a lovely little cheap Z portable lens mm. for wildlife it's really handy yeah, yeah, it is. sharp it is. but it just doesn't have the expensive no. glass look, and I don't, I don't like. Which is not expensive. surprising, is it? Because it's you, you pay need... for what you get, yeah. like you should. Yeah, yeah. So, it, those two lenses are good in their own respect, but when you compare it to a 7200 2.8, it lacks a lot, I think. Yeah. But yeah. then, yeah, if you have to think about those lenses, are high aperture. You know, they're 6.3. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's a 2.8. So yeah. if you're in a lower light situation, that's going to blow it's, it out the yeah, water. It is, yeah, it is. You can't compare them. No. Yeah, and we also compared it to my 200 to 500. Mm which obviously the, it starts at my, that one ends at 200 and my yeah. one starts. But when we compared them, the actual image was, when shooting at the same settings, they were like almost identical. So that's good in itself. So you could use it as a wildlife lens potentially, and because of the crop power on a high megapixel Z7 yeah. or something, even yeah. on the Z6, you can crop in so far, you can potentially use it, maybe not for bird, small birds, no. but for larger wildlife, I'll definitely recommend it. It's not going it. to compare with the reach of your 200 to 500 to 500, no. is it? Because you'll be cropping in so much. No. It's going to lose that battle, I guess. You did a wedding together. You were the second shooter. So yep. a second shooter at a wedding stays at the distance. Yeah. Get more of the candid shots. Like I was in right in the close. You were shooting from afar, from yep. up high and low. and Yeah. And it's perfect. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed. I loved it. I really enjoyed it. And you, you could, and because you you got that bit of distance, and you're the second shooter, so everybody's looking mm. at you, taking your direction. Yeah, you can get got some great candid mm. shots from it. Distance, depth of field was spot on. So then we come on to we've had us doing a few videos about the teleconverter, and this is also yeah. controversial. <laughs> we created the controversy a bit as well. So we got the one point four teleconverter. And our first video, really, we were really harsh on it, or realistic. Yeah. <laughs> what, do you have any more thoughts about it since then? I've tr to be honest, because of that, I've hardly used it since. If you compare using the teleconverter and not using it, but, but cropping in mm. to match that field of view, mm. we could not find any difference between those two. And, and it's probably, arguably, Without the teleconverter, it even might be even slightly sharper or better. It's certainly no yeah. worse. So here's the 7200 versus the teleconverter. Starting positions here. So you would see the teleconverter has a distinct advantage of being a 280 millimeter. But remember, the 7200 could crop in 250% and still have a sharp image. But you can only crop in 200% with the teleconverter, and it equals the same image. I'd actually say they're almost identical here. So therefore the teleconverter doesn't give any further advantage in sharpness. You'd have so, to, in lower light situations, it'd be worse because you can't use a 2.8. I've slightly changed my you view. You have, yeah. And because, because I've been doing bird photography with my 200 to 500, sometimes I'd like to see the screen a bit closer. I know you can use the, the, the uh, magnifier and things yeah. like that. Sometimes having a closer field of view is really handy. To get a much better eye on the subject. Yeah, so you can see what's going yeah. on better. And also for printing, I believe that because you're starting off with the full megapixel picture, the more you crop in, the less yeah. megapixels you have to print. So then the teleconverter, teleconverter would add better ability for larger printing and yeah, higher I'm, density. I'm, I know you... It's complicated. You tried that argument on me, I don't quite understand <laughs> it sufficiently. I think you'd almost have to print a couple of large prints to see whether you think there's any difference. They'd have to be really big prints, yeah. I think. Because since our video then, about over a year ago, new lenses have come out now. Yeah. So the 100 to 400, 5.6. So you're saying the 100 to 400 natively would be a lot sharper than using a It's an S lens, because we just Googled it then. <laughs> so 
At 400 mil, that is going to be, I would say, absolutely, that's going to be better. Because if you put a two times heli converter on this, this is going to, it's going to make this 5.6. Mm. So that's the same, isn't mm. it? That, the 400 mil native S lens, it's got to be better than a two times heli converter on this at 200 mil, surely. But that's a, one of the best quality lenses. Yeah, I know. But, said. So yeah. I would have thought, it would be an interesting comparison, but I would have thought that mm. if you go out and buy a 100, 400 and it didn't beat this, with a two times tele converter on it, you'd yeah, feel yeah, a bit true. sick, wouldn't you? Yeah. I just like the idea of having two different lenses in one, but obviously the tele converters. But yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a something to think about. I, I would mean, say. I suppose the argument possibly against that is that 140 is built to cover a, a, a much longer focal range mm, than 70 exactly. to 200. So perhaps yeah. there's a little trade off there. The next bit for me is that I don't have one. As much as I love that lens, yeah. I don't have one. I know. And why don't I have one? <laughs> because I got the lenses around it instead. So I've got the 105 1.4 for portraits and other yep. things. And I love the depth of field, the 1.4. Yep. And then I've got the 200 to 500 for the wildlife and the birds. Mm. And so... And you've got the 85 at the bottom there. So you need a big bag to carry those three <laughs> lenses around you, wouldn't you? This is the thing. If you've got primes and you can move about, perfect. Yeah. In a lot of situations in your life, you can't. No. That's where you need a variable zoom. Yeah. Took some photos at a gig on Saturday night. Small to well, medium-sized venue in a way. You could stand at the back and get a whole range of different shots. Yeah. Or you could still go up close to the stage and use 70 mil, and it was wide enough to get some shots. If you just said, do you want to take the 105? I said, you're joking. Because that's big anyway, isn't it? It's wide, big diameter left. This is You're not agreeing zoom. with me. You won't agree with me. I'm not going to agree you, no. I need a separate video to go through all this properly to really extract this controversial battle. Primes of, versus zoom. Yeah, yeah, basically. But I sometimes wonder, do I or have I just started wondering now? <laughs> this whole thing about shallow depth field f1.8, is that really photographers thinking and looking at that? You know what I mean? <laughs> Is that all in the, just in the, the mind public of The public wouldn't be able to notice You know, I mean, if you, you could pretty much do any gig with a 24 to 70 F2.8 and a 70 to 200 F2.8. Okay, not wildlife, because that's especially. I think the, 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 the Nikon Z Trinity is the best three lenses they've ever made. Yeah, so let's bring this all together. Comparing several different lenses, and it often triumphs above a lot of them, if not mm. equals them. Mm. So therefore, it gets a massive stamp of approval from me. Is it from you? <laughs> it's your favourite lens, right? It does from you, but you don't want one. I don't want one. <laughs> well, I do want one. Mm. So if you're, anyone's debating getting this lens, if it's good enough, Just it is. get it. And what do you think? Have you got it? Are you considering getting it? Has this made change your mind about it? Has it helped you make a decision on getting it? Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> there we go.